I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way, God. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. Yes, Lord. 
just in me oh right now oh right now come on let's have church this morning oh the lord is blessing me he is blessing me right now right now oh right now if he's blessing you put your hand together i say the lord is blessing me he is blessing me Oh, right now, oh, right now, you know he woke me up this morning, and he started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me. Come on, right now, right now. Oh, he woke me up this morning. Yes, he did. I was clothed in my right mind. Come on, where's the church folk at? Oh, he didn't let me sleep too late. Yeah, he woke me, woke me, woke me right on time. You know he woke me. This morning, and he started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now, oh, right now. Tell somebody he woke me up. Oh, he woke me up this morning. Yes, he did. I was clothed in my right mind. He didn't let me sleep too late. He didn't let me sleep too late. Oh, he woke me, woke me, woke me right on time. You know he woke me up this morning. And he started me on my in me the love of God the love is blessing me the love the love is blessing me right now right now oh right now do me a favor this morning watch you jump to your feet and look at your neighbor say neighbor the Lord is blessing me come on Stand to your feet and tell somebody, after all that I've been through this week, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is blessing me right now, right now. Hallelujah. Come on, tell somebody that he's blessing me. Hallelujah. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. And for that, we give him praise. Why don't you put your hands together and give God praise this morning as we bless the name of Jesus. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I guess it's on. Um, amen. They're going to turn me up a little bit. Yeah. A little bit more. Amen. Amen. Singing on. Oh, how I love Jesus. Sing it all. Oh, how I love Jesus. I love him. How I love Jesus. Because he first. Can we stand all over the building this morning? He first loved me. There is a name. Oh, there is a name. I love to sing in words. It sounds like music in my head. It's the sweetest day on earth. Tells me it tells me 
to go to the throne of grace this morning and if I'm correct I believe is Miss Geraldine amen so as Miss Geraldine begins to make her way up here let me just ask how many people had a good week this morning this yes, week hallelujah. yeah regardless of what went on the Lord still kept us and the Lord still allowed us to be in the number one more time I say all that because this week, I was at my cousin's funeral on Friday. And for anybody that understands, some people are not going to get this. Um, my cousin was 65. She would have been 66 in April. But here's the blessing for me. She laid down and went to sleep and woke up in the arms of Jesus. Mm, my Lord. And I know I can't predict anything, but trust and believe. If the Lord asks for us to tell him how he like, we'd like to go, I want to fall asleep on this side and wake up on the other side. Um, no pain, no being in the hospital, no watching my body go down. And, and if it's all right, I know Ms. Geraldine is up here and ready. And I'm going to ask Sheldon to do me a favor because they sung a song. They, they sung a song. I should wear a crown. And I don't want to hear the whole, the whole song. But the part that blesses me is the songwriter said, I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story. And for us as Christians, that, that should be a blessing. Yeah. Because that means when this life is over and we get on the other side, I don't know who I'm going to see first. But Miss Genevieve, when I get to heaven, I'm going to do exactly what the songwriter said. I'm going to put on my robe. And the first person that I meet, Lamar, Lavar, I'm going to tell them the story of how not only I got over, but how the Lord helped me get over. When people tried to tear me down and beat me up, when people told me I couldn't, I shouldn't, and I yeah. wouldn't be able to, I'm going to let them know that's because you don't know the man named Jesus, but you know him now because we all in the same place. But just imagine if every morning we got up, the first person that we came in contact with, we put on our robe and told the story of how we made it over. I shall wear a crown. I shall wear a crown. When it's all over, when it's over. Put on my robe, tell the story how I made it over. When we get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. I'm gonna put on my robe. 
YouTube and tell the story how I made it over. No more crying, no more worrying, no more stress. I'm gonna put on my robe. Yes, Lord, I'm gonna put on my robe. I got a robe, you got a robe. I'm gonna put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over. Made it over soon as I get home. Oh, soon as soon as I come face to face with my Savior and make it home. Yes, Lord. Soon as I get home. You know, when I look at this week, With the people that has gone home this week, two that I know, tears. Yeah. And we're here today. We're here this morning to praise God. Thank you, Lord. It, it was two home goings on yesterday. I could only go to one. It was one at St. John. Mm. And there was a young man on yesterday. And if we don't have nothing to be thankful for, it's not the age that matters. And the one that who is seniors, be thankful. Right. It could have been another way. When I look into the congregation, see Miss Odessa, Deaconess Daly, I see the Kellys. I don't know if anyone else aged, the one who is past 75. Be thankful, because God is good. Could have been another way. And every morning when I wake up, <laughs> didn't have yeah. to be. Thank you, Lord. When I wake up, I look around. I'm still here. Thank you, yeah. God. Didn't have to be, but my God is merciful. And when you get a certain age, caregivers and mm, still in your right mind with energy. It's only God. It's only God. Oh, merciful Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Thanking you, God, one, one more time to be in this holy place and lift up your name. God, when I look into the congregation, and I see the faces that are still here, that are still healthy, enough to go in. And when I see Miss Roxanne come in, in her condition, there's, there's so many of us who can walk in on our own and do things of our own, but we have so much to do that we can't come in. I'm so grateful that God has spared her to come in and hear the word. And I ask right now, dear God, that our pastor, Reverend Gosnell, dear God, anoint him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet that 
the word will come forth this morning that we will jump up and say thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord. for one more time. Let the Holy Spirit anoint all of us, God, because we need it. With all that is going around it, <clears throat> all that is happening in this world, and Maryland has been spared. Thank you, God. So, God, is anyone in? That needs your help, God. That yeah. needs your healing. Anyone in the sound of my voice, God? I lift up Dana, who's still leaning on you, God. And I lift up Martha. I don't, mm. There's so many people that I know, God, that need your help. Yeah. Mm. And I'm thankful, God. I'm thankful, God. I'm thankful, God, for the blessings that you have bestowed on the members of this congregation. The blessings that you have bestowed on the one who is listening home. Mm. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. And this time of year, we are reminded of how Jesus hung on the cross, shed his blood for us. God, and we don't love him enough to spend an hour, a couple of hours serving him, praising him, loving him. But God, we understand. We understand your love. Because you showed us years ago uh, how much you loved us, Jesus. You showed us already. And we thank you. We love you. Is anyone that stand in need of a blessing, God? Touch and bless them right now in the name of Jesus. Touch them, heal them right now. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Oh, Lord, Lord, Jesus, we give you the honor. Oh, how we love Jesus. Oh, yes, because he, he first loved us. When he shed his blood on the cross, he loved us then. I give you the praise, God. In the precious name of Jesus, I lift up this prayer. Amen. Amen. Simple song that says, Lord, I want to say thank you. Lord, I want to say thank you. You'll get it in a minute. Just simply say, Lord, I want to say thank you. Lord, I want to say thank you for all you've done for me. For all you've done for me, God, for all you've done for me. I think you got it now. Come on, church. Oh, Lord, I want to say thank you for all you've done, oh God. Lord, I want to say, Lord. I want to say thank you, yeah, oh Lord, Lord Jesus, I want to say thank you for all you've done for me, for all you've done for me, for all, for all you've done for me. 
me one more time, last time. Lift your hand and sing it with me. Lord, I want to say thank you. Lord, I want to say thank you. Yes, Lord. Lord, I want to say thank you. Lord, I want to say thank you. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, I want to say thank you for all you've done for me. Oh, for all you've done for me. E for, for all you've done for me. One more time. For all you've done for me. Oh, for all you've done for me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All you've done for me. For all you've done for me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Be reading the New Testament, Paul's letter to Ephesus in Ephesians 5, verses 8 through 14. For once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord, you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, sleeper, awake, rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Amen. If you all would please stand for the Gospel of John. Be reading verses, be re reading the entire chapter, John's gospel. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with saliva and spread the mud on the man's eye, saying to him, go wash in the pool of Shalom, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and, and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who, who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but is someone like him? He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then, how were your eyes open? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Shalom and wash. 
Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who was a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but you do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know is though, that, though I was blind now, I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sins. And are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven, out, driven him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? He answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have seen him and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see. And those who do not see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say, we see, your sin remains. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen, amen. You can be seated. Before we go into our sermonic selection, um, let me just do this now. It's a lot of good noise yeah. going on. Good noise going on, and before we go to the sermon and the sermonic selection, and then I, somewhere else in my head, I want every young child to come forward. Young person, if you can't walk on your own, let an adult bring you, amen. 
But we're going to pray with our young people this morning. We're going to pray with our young people. So come on, young people. And I know y'all younger than me, so y'all should be moving already. I should be moving slow, not you are. Trust me, I, I promise not to keep you up here long. Come on, bring all the young people, children, everything, babies, all that. All right, all right. Come on, come on, come on. You can do it. You can do it. Yep, come on, bring the baby, bring the kids. There we go. Bring them all, bring them all. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. And let me see, let me see. Can we, can we pray? Gracious and loving God, we pray for each and every young person right now, not only under the sound of my voice, but every young person wherever. If they're in our virtual worship space in our home, we, we lift them up right now, Lord. Because, Lord, the one thing that we've come to understand is that we are living in some tumultuous and terrible days, Lord. But the one thing we still know is that you are a keeper. By your power divine, keep our hurt, harm, and danger around them. Wherever they go, we ask that not only do you go before them, but we ask that you walk beside them and behind them. We ask that you allow the angels to watch over them all day and all night. Lord, bless their homes, bless their parents, bless their friends, bless their families. But more than that, Lord, somewhere as they continue to grow up, we simply ask that you allow them to put one thing in their minds. And Lord, that's simply that there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Allow them to put in their minds that Jesus loves the little children. And Lord, all of us at one time or another were little children. So right now, we thank you for each and every one of them. We ask, Lord, that you allow them to go to higher heights and deeper depths than we could ever, ever, ever imagine. Allow them to be not only what they want to be, but allow them to be everything that you have already ordained them to be. Lord, we just came this morning to say, Lord, we thank you for your children. We thank you for the good noise this morning, Lord. Because, Lord, they may not understand it, but when I hear the good noise, I'm reminded, let everything that had breath praise the Lord. So this morning, Lord, I thank you for their praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. I'm here to only because you made, you move mountains, you cause war. With your power, you perform miracles. There ain't nothing that's impossible. God, cover our youth, and we're standing here only because you made one more time. You move mountains, yes, you do, God, and you cause walls to fall. With your power, you have all power. You perform miracles. There ain't nothing, God, that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made our way. If he's a way maker, can you put your hands together and give God praise? He's making a way for our young people. And we thank him. There was a song back in the day. We used to sing it went a little like this. It said, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. Then a little light from heaven filled my soul. Oh, it bathed my heart in love. Oh, and wrote my name above. Oh, and I, just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Come on, let's sing it. Oh, now let us 
have a little talk with Jesus. I promise you'll feel better. Tell him all about our struggles. Oh, he'll hear our faintest cry, yeah, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn in it, then you'll know a little fire burning. You'll find just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, sometimes my past seems drear. Sometimes without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may fill my soul. Oh, the mist of sin may rise and hide my starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus makes it rhyme. Now let us. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell them all about, tell them all about our struggle. Oh, he'll hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn in, then you'll know a little fire burning. You'll find just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, I may have doubts. And fear. My eyes may be filled with tears, but Jesus is the friend who watches both day and night. Oh, I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Oh, tell him all about our struggles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn in. No, a little fire burning. You'll find just a little talk with Jesus makes it. Can I ask you a question? Oh, said I wonder who will help me lift Jesus. I wonder who will. I need somebody to, live, to help me lift Jesus. Oh, clap your hands and help me lift Jesus. Stomp your feet. I need somebody help me lift Jesus. to help me lift Jesus. Help me lift them higher. Oh, higher, higher, higher. I'll draw all men unto me. Oh, I wonder who will help me. Well, help me lift Jesus. I need somebody to help me lift Jesus. Come on and clap your hands and help and stump your feet. I need somebody. To help me lift Jesus, and help me lift him higher, 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 higher. I draw all men unto me. Amen. Amen. Wonder who will help me lift Jesus. It's, it's wonderful sitting up here and looking out at everybody. Because you can sit and you can tell when you're happy. You can tell when you're sad. You can tell when you like whatever's going on. And you can tell when you don't like what's going on. I, I especially like watching our um, season. You know, I don't call anybody old. Old to me is like a four-letter word. Amen. Because I believe that you're only as old as you believe you are. And as long as you keep thinking you're young, it doesn't matter what anything else feels like on your body. You just keep thinking you're young. Amen. Doesn't matter that you have every possible itis there is. As long as you keep on believing that you're 21 or 25, everything is going to be all right. Um, I try to tell people that people say, oh, I'm getting old. Don't cuss at me. <laughs> you get old by yourself. I'm not trying to do that. I want to be and feel as young as I can, as long as I'm able to. As long as I'm able to, this morning, we're going to look at the Old Testament. 
the Old Testament, starting um, the first Samuel, first Samuel. Um, we're going to read from verse, sorry, I'm sorry, chapter 15, starting at verse 34 and reading all the way through chapter 16, verse 13. First Samuel 15, 34, reading to 16, verse 13. Then Samuel went to Ramah and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death. But Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord was sorry that he made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, do you come peaceably? He said, peaceably. I, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, uh, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are, are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he's keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. My brothers and sisters, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Let me just start off. I don't usually do this, but let me start off this morning just suggesting. I'm just making suggestions, Sheldon. Um, this one might hurt a little bit. So if you got on tight shoes, or if you tied them too tight this morning, just loosen them up just a little. Or if, you, if you're really nervous, just take them off. Won't nobody be able to see you except for your neighbors, amen? Because um, every now and then, we, we got to step on some toes to let people understand that just because we get up here, it doesn't mean that they're excluded from what we're talking about. Because um, see, this morning I came to talk to each and every one of us about something that we've probably done at least one time in our lives. Um, this morning, as we stood and read the story of how David became the chosen one, I, I just want to ask us a simple question. 
do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? And before I even get into discussing it, let me explain something to us. Um, one thing that I believe I've known for most of my life, but not really said is something that one of my professors said his and told his entire class. And he tells every class this on the first day of class. And it's the fact that each of us views things through our own set of lenses, through our, through our own set of contacts, through our own set of glasses. But sometimes in order to see things right, you got to look at it from another person's point of view. And, and, and this is something I believe is so obvious and evident in this story of, of David that it should make us re-examine how we look at and perceive our fellow brothers and sisters. As the saying goes, it's, it's sometimes hard to judge a book by its cover. Um, how many people read, not Kindle, but really go to the store and find a book? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, all right. a couple of us. Um, and how many people go, and when you look at the cover and you see the title, you say, surely this is going to be a great book. But you don't flip over because, you know, on the back or inside, sometimes it gives you a little synopsis of what's going on. You just look at the front and go, this is going to be a good book. And you open up and start reading. And by page three, you just close it and realize that you wasted your money. Amen. Um, and and I, I, I don't, I don't want to get too far ahead, but I, I would even step out on a limb and say that probably are a few of us sitting here or listening with us this morning who have allowed some good people not to enter into our circle of friends simply because of how they looked when we saw them. Amen. And for those of us who can sit here this morning and truthfully admit we are guilty as charged, it's good to know we serve a God who does not focus on our outside. It's, it's good to know we serve a God who does not care whether the ladies got their hair done or the brothers went and got a fresh haircut or not. Um, uh, for, for at least two of us in here, haircuts are easy. Amen. Amen. Um, see, it's, it's good to know this morning that we, we serve a God who is able to look beyond our faults and see our needs. And, and trust me, I, I, I pray that um, we, don't, we don't get hurt too bad this morning. But I, I just came to bring and say a word from the Lord. And one thing I know is when we learn to tell the truth, somewhere in there, Miss Gertrude, it says we shame the devil. And and all I'm saying is there are some of us here this morning who if God only cared about the outside and not the inside, you would probably be getting too much. In case you didn't understand that, um, if blessings were only given out by how good we looked on the outside, okay, all right. Now, now if it's, let, let, I, if, sorry, I'm, I'm gonna get back to that, but let me get back to David. Because the, the fact when we look at David is that God can use any one of us. Yeah. And, and what I like about God is the fact that God enjoys using the ones who the world has given up on. The ones who for the majority of their lives have heard people tell them they will never amount to anything. And if there is someone here who has heard any of this in life, I, I just want us to know that God specializes. And what God can do for one, God can do the same thing for us. So, so before we look at David and his eventual appointment and anointment, I, I need to give us a quick summary of what's brought us to this point. And, and I want us to understand, although this happened a long time ago, I stand here declaring the Lord canon is still anointing and appointing some Davids today. Amen. 
But, but the thing we need to realize is we cannot and will never see what God can and is able to see. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing to realize is prior to David's eventual appointment, Saul had been made king. However, because of some of Saul's decisions and choices, he had lost just a little bit of favor with God. And, and so God being God stopped by and had a little talk with Samuel. Now, now if, if you may not remember, Samuel had been called by God also and didn't realize exactly just what was happening until his mentor, Eli, explained to him it was God who was calling. And, and so after God spoke and explained to Samuel, it was now time to remove Saul from his position. God told Samuel, go to Jesse, because God had chosen one of Jesse's sons to be the next king. But poor Samuel wasn't too eager to go and perform the task because he was afraid if, if Saul found out, Saul would have him killed. But sometimes we got to remember, in fact, let me, let me not say sometimes, all the time, yeah. We need to remember that when God gives us an assignment to do, God has already figured out everything, yeah. All we got to do is go and do it and let God do the work. See, see, Paul, poor Saul began to get like some of us today. He, he had been selected to be king by God, but somewhere along his journey, Saul forgot who and whose he was. Saul forgot the fact that the same way God places us in positions, God can also turn around and remove us out of the position. Uh, there are times when God gives us things in our lives and for some reason, only known by God. We begin to believe everything going on in our lives is because of what we are doing. Give you a quick example and we can move on. Uh, let's take it in church. Um, yeah, we gonna make it up. Um, Jason plays the drums most of the time and now all of a sudden, Jason think he Phil Collins on the drums. Um, so what happens? The Lord removes him and all of a sudden Jenny goes, I can play the drums. And Jason goes, excuse me, I'm Phil Collins. What's wrong with you? And Jenny goes, yeah, but I'm Jenny Belk. And the Lord allowed me to know how to play the drums. So slide to the side and, and, and Jenny begins to sit down and, and then poor old Jason begins to come back down to the ground because guess what? God has a ram in the bush for every situation that we have going on in our lives. See, we, we begin to think that we all that and we forget to give God the praise. But we gotta remember that the God we serve is a jealous God who tells us we are not to put any other gods before him. We need to remember when we begin to put things before God, including ourselves, we had better be prepared for, oh, uh, this is not, this is, um, I don't want to use that word, for a reaction. That's a better way to get it. Um, um, Because there are always times in our lives before we get to a place in our lives where we're saved and sanctified, where we want to forget the life we are leading and living is never about us. And so because of our attitudes, that causes God to move us out of the way and then go on to choose another who no one may have ever expected to be put in a, in a position to be used by God. Um, again, I tell you all, I, I, I love watching what goes on. And if you would have told me, Madison, um, I, can, I, can I talk about something good that you do every Sunday? Yeah. Um, I watch Madison now clap. And Madison, you nine, right? Uh-huh. But Madison doesn't only just clap on the actual beat. Madison starts giving you a Baptist syncopated beat as well. That some of us can't even do. Amen. I say that to say, for all you know, one day Madison could be the director of the choir. And we just don't know it. Because God always has a job for someone that we don't expect 
to do it. And, and it is a statement that makes me simply ask the question, do you see what I see? See, Saul has now been rejected by God because he didn't live up to the expectations God had placed upon him. See, when God puts us in a position, trust and believe, it's a whole lot of stuff that goes along with that position. Saul forgot why he was doing what he was doing. And unfortunately, there are times when we will trust God when everything is going good. But when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Saul, like so many of us today, decided the only time he was going to listen to God was when life was good. But in order to get his accolades, Saul believed he had to do things his way. Have there been times in our lives where we began to lean on our own understanding? Times when we thought if we wanted to be somebody in life, we, we had to make it happen on our own. But it is good to know as we've gotten older and really begun to understand what it means to lean on the everlasting arms uh, that we also remembered we have to learn to trust in the Lord. Yeah. So now it's Samuel's responsibility to go and anoint the next king. But remember, God has already chosen who that'll be. And in order to keep Samuel safe, God tells him every single thing that he needs to do that's going to allow him not to be harmed. So, so now he, you know, he, he gets to, to Jesse and he, he, he says, um, Jesse, I need you to bring your sons out in. Jesse brings his sons and Remember, Samuel could only see Jesse's sons from the outside because there was no way for him to know what was on the inside. Um, so, so, so for the sake of time, because y'all know Jesse had a lot, he comes face to face with seven of them. However, God told him, None of them have been chosen. Now, there's no real description of any of them, but if it's okay, I'm going to try to give us a picture of what we may have seen if we were there and doing what Samuel had to do in this day and age. And if I would have thought ahead of time, I would have picked seven men and had them come up here and they could have been the sons, but just picture, I'm going to try to get seven. So Sheldon comes along, he's son, num son number one. Um, and, and he begins to tell us all about himself and he looks like a real strong brother. And, 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 and poor, poor Samuel's ready, but God says, nah, he's not the one. And um, then Jason comes along, he's, he's dressed from head to toe in all of the latest fashions. And Samuel's like, gotta be him, right? And God says, nope, not him. Michael Gaynor, he comes along and as he approaches, we notice all this money just falling out of his pockets, but we don't care about money because our father's rich in houses and land. So God says, nah, move him out the way. And then Michael Sims comes along and instead of walking up, he, he pulls up in his brand new car, but we don't need any possessions because we know whatever we need, God has it. And, and, and then Mr. Melvin comes and LeVar comes and, and Dale comes, educated, proper, and clean cut. But before we can say anything, Miss Odessa, God simply tells us they are not the ones. Uh, now, poor Samuel is like, wait a minute, huh? Uh, what's going on here, uh, Jesse? You, you got any more kids? Because for some reason, God sent me here for something and none of them made it. And, and, and poor Jesse, thinking, no way does God want me to bring that little one that I got out there tending the sheep. But Jesse says, yeah, I, I got one more, but he's taking care of the sheep. And Samuel said, I don't really care what he's doing. You need to get him up here because until God tells me who he's chosen, we're going to stay right here. So here comes this little kid, probably a teenager. Probably might have his little shepherd hook. And he walking up. They said he was ruddy. But he was handsome. And he was good looking. And here's the thing. As he was coming, God said, that's the one yeah. right there. See, the other brothers would have been perfect for the, for the position. But we got to remember, we serve a God who can make a way out of no way. A God who is able to do the impossible and use those of us who would never be chosen by anyone else. Um, Bible 
study people. David was that one who was picked last. He was the one that they said, surely we don't want you on this team. But we got to remember when God puts you on God's team, you working for the winning team, the team who has everything. Um, I'm going to see how much, how, how dated you are. Remember, there was a commercial. It was for the army. Do you remember what the slogan was? Be all you can be. So when you get on God's team, God is about to help us be all we can be. And if we don't understand uh, that there have been some times when we looked at certain people who were in positions of power and for the life of us could not understand how or why the position was theirs. After all, what did they have going on that we didn't? And although David was a good looking brother, we also need to remember looks are not everything. Because even in the passage of scripture, God tells Samuel not to look at how the person looks on the outside, because this is not what concerns God. Our outside can look as good as it wants to look. But if we don't have the love of Jesus Christ living way down on the inside, if we constantly go through life doing all we can to do some plastic surgery on our outside appearance, I'm going to see how, how, how worldly the congregation is today. I, I'm not sure what the men are doing, but they got these three letters that a whole lot of women are going. It's called B, B, yeah, okay. And a lot of people are getting these BBs thinking it's going to help their outside appearance. Trust and believe you can get all the outside work done you want to. Yeah. But if you're not working on the inside, yeah. um, help me out just a little preacher because I ain't understanding. Okay. Most of us have cars, right? And usually if it's warm, maybe at least once a year, we take it to the car wash and get it cleaned or we wash it ourselves. Well, I got news for all of us. We can clean that car to the so clean that we could eat off of it. But if we're not taking care of what's under the hood, the clean car may not get us anywhere. Well, I need y'all to know this. All of us in here this morning look real good on the outside. We didn't put on our Sunday best. We didn't make sure we shined our shoes, made sure our tie is straight, made sure our dresses was pressed, made sure the lipstick was just right, hair was curled just right, braids were done just right, smile looks just right, handshake was just right. But if all that is fake and you don't have it on the inside, you just simply wasting your time. Do you see what I see? We may be the ones who get left in the field, but if there is something we want in our lives and God has already begun to anoint and appoint us for the position, then it's already ours. Give me two minutes and I'm finished. Here's the thing. How many people sitting here or listening with us this morning can raise their hand and say when they were five years old, they knew that what they're doing right now is what they would be doing when they got to this age. Anybody? Praise God, me either. Um, how many people, when you get up in the morning, young people, you might not understand this yet, take a little time to say, Lord, thank you for where you have me because I know what I got shouldn't be mine. How many people remember when they bought their first house, first apartment, whatever, and you looked at your credit and you looked at your money and you said, ain't no way in the world, Miss Helen, I'm gonna be able to do this. But somewhere in the middle of the night, before you went to that bank, you fell on your knees and say, look, Lord, I'm a little tired of my living arrangement. And the one thing I do remember is that mama said, grandmama said, and great grandmama said, when you need something, go have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about your struggles. I know I should go into the bank and be dressed, but 
I don't have any good clothes, Lord. And you heard the voice of Jesus say, go into the bank just as you are. But when you walk through the door, simply call on the name of Jesus. You walked in the bank, sat down. The bank representative looked at you from head to toe. Was all ready to probably say no, but got the clicking and a clacking on the computer. <laughs> Eyebrows began to raise. A look of puzzlement came on his or her face. Meanwhile, you were just sitting there saying, what God has for me is for me. You walked in saying, I know what you see, but you don't know who I know. The bank representative looked at you and said, well, look here, Mr. Sims, um, I have to be honest with you. I was ready to deny this loan, but just when I was about to hit the button, the person who we sent away to be your creditor, which was around creditor number 50, said yes. So I have to approve the loan for you. You looked at them with a smile on your face. And as you walked out, you said, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. See, the problem in the world is the world only wants to look on the outside. And my outside may look dirty. My outside may be dark. My outside may look like I'm not worth it. But the one thing I do know is this. I serve a God who already told me he can do anything but fail. And everything I need, God has it. And it's mine for the asking. So when you feel like the world is against you, do you see what I see? Because what you see is a beat down individual. But what I see is a child of God who's been through the fire, who's been through the flood, and is still standing. So this morning, we simply ask you, if you don't know this Jesus, if you don't know the fact that God can and will do anything that we ask, if it be God's will, then we ask you this morning to come and give your life to Christ. Come and give your life back to the one who hung on a cross to save not only you, but to save all of us. Come and give your life to the one who doesn't care what's going on on the outside but just simply cares about our inside. If there's one this morning in the building, won't you come? If there's one in our virtual space, won't you simply send us a comment or a chat? Trust and believe a new thing can begin right here and right now. Because Jesus said, if you take one step, I'll help you take two. Will there be one this morning? And the going gets tough And the hills are hard to climb I've started out oh, a long time ago And there is no doubt in my mind I've decided, yes I did to make Jesus my choice. Can we sing it just one more time? Oh, you know the road is rough and the going gets tough. And sometimes, church, the hills are hard to climb. I started up. Yes, Lord. It was And so, as we prepare to end this service, 
be mindful that it is 11.13 and we will be going into a meeting at 11.30. Um, so if you're at home and you're trying to make the meeting, you got 17 minutes to get here. But let me say this, this month is Women's History Month, amen? And there are a lot of women, regardless of their color, regardless of their beliefs, who are doing a lot of things. Um, we now have, I believe it's the Blue Angels, who have an all-female um, pilot group. There are four women who are now, I believe it's five-star generals. Um, but we decided to do something a little different this morning. Um, we decided to talk about somebody right at home. Is that all right? And um, I'm trying to read this in, because I, I'm gonna see if you all can guess who she is. And it starts off by saying, as we continue to celebrate Women's History Month, who is this virtuous woman? And this woman does not know that we talking about her this morning. Um, so I'm trying to find stuff where it's gonna even, let me see, maybe she'll know that it's her when I say this. Um, it says she's known for her rice pudding. <laughs> I guess most of y'all already know who we talking about. Says she's known to some as a sophisticated lady who is peppy and has a zest for life. Yeah. Um, I don't want to tell y'all where she lived because then y'all know who it is. Um, no, I don't want to tell y'all that either. Um, says she participated in a historic march in Washington, D.C. with the Women's Society with the late Ms. Daisy Parker. She served faithfully as a Sunday school teacher, coordinator and counselor of the United Methodist Youth Fellowship. Worked at Fort Meade. Tended, nope, mm -mm. see, I'm trying to not tell y'all who she is. She got a license in cosmetology. Um, not only a license, but then she received her master's license. Mm -hmm. Her art at using the Marcel curlers, I have no idea what any of that is, would glamorize any woman's outer beauty. See, somebody said it's very important. She furthered her studies at Anne Arundel Community College, taking courses in geriatrics. She is a mother, a grandmother, and a great-grandmother. And what I can't understand for the life of me, Ms. Gertrude, is how can somebody who is only 25 years old right. do all right. I, I couldn't understand it. But this morning, with the help of her daughter, with the help of some people in the church, we don't even want to say we're recognizing, um, but we wanted everybody just to understand that we have rich history right here within. So just in case you all did not know who we were talking about, can we just take five seconds to not only thank the Lord for Miss Odessa, but to thank the Lord for all of our seniors. God is there with you. Oh, you may not feel it. Oh, you're not alone. So, um, <laughs> yes, ma'am, it, it is you, um, it is you, um, and I know she's standing up, because she want to tell y'all something. Yeah. Uh, Hallelujah. 
Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Amen. 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 <laughs> and for those of you who are who are in our virtual worship and may not have heard it, um, I thought she was 21. She's 24. That's what she said. She's 24. She said her children get on her because she is still driving. Um, and the, the funny thing is to me, it's great in our honesty, uh, Miss Odessa, you 94 now? In two months, she'll be 94. So just think this. I'm not hurting anybody's feelings. I'm just telling the truth right now. Because Miss Odessa once told me it's okay to say stuff as long as you're telling the truth. Isn't it sad, Donna, that a 94, almost 94-year-old can beat us to church? Yeah, that's the truth. And that's the truth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got some folks that's 20, 30, 40, 50 who talking about, I don't think I can come to church today. But you're going to see them this week somewhere. But not only does Miss Odessa come to church, and I know that this has happened because I've heard Myra say it. Myra has suggested, Mama, I'll drive you to church. And I'm sure she does not say it like this. That's okay, Myra. I'm going to take myself. Um, but I say that because that's a blessing. Yeah. And if the Lord allows all of us to be that way as we age, what a blessing that will be. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let's just look at our announcements real quick. Announcements real quick. As you all know, good Lord. Um, don't worry, I'm coming closer. We have our Wednesday Clinton service. Amen. Um, CUCC uh, at 12 will be at John Wesley again. And at seven o'clock this week, it is, if I'm not mistaken, it is, it is at Wayman Good Hope, I believe. Very good. I'm, I'm finally on it. Um, at 12 o'clock, yours truly will be preaching. And at seven o'clock, it will be Reverend Kenneth Moore from John Wesley. Um, don't forget our Tuesday Bible study. We are in week four. We have three weeks to go. Don't forget on Thursdays, we do our prayer service at 12. Um, anybody willing to be on the tech team, let them please know. Also, just a quick um, FYI, please, if you have not given Ms. Pat or the admin or somebody your new address or your current, let me say it like this, your current address, we mail some stuff out and we just got about 10 to 12 envelopes back. So that means we have the wrong address for people. So please make sure we have your correct address. Um, the other thing is if you are, if you feel so led to, to give to us and give to the church, give to this branch of Zion this week, we ask that you mail your um, uh, donation into Metropolitan United Methodist Church, 548 Queenstown Road, Severn, Maryland, 21144. You can come by the church, drop it in the black drop box. You can use PayPal on our website. You can use your bank. You can go through Givelify or you can go through Cash App, which is dollar sign 548MUMC, all lowercase letters. Um, this month, our mission um, initiatives are our sacrificial offering, as which is every month, and also our benevolence fund. So if you would like to give to any of those, that is what we are doing this morning. I pray that everyone had a good time. I pray that all minds are satisfied and by the clock in the back in my watch, praise the Lord, we have seven minutes, seven minutes. So if all minds are satisfied, can we stand all over this building if we can and are able and look to the Lord to be dismissed. Now may the God of hope, mercy, love, peace, and joy rest, rule, and abide in each and every one of us until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. God, Amen. God be with you. God be with you. 
Oh, God, be with you until we meet again. Oh, God, be with you. God, be with you. Oh, God, be with you until we meet again. Amen and amen. Everyone have a blessed week.